Hey there, Adrian Rosebrock here from PyMageSearch.com, and today we got an introductory lesson on how to load an image with OpenCV using the cb2.imread function. Now, anytime you do anything with computer vision or image processing and the OpenCV library, you're going to need to load the image into memory first. So regardless if you want to apply face detection, face recognition, object detection, object tracking, if you want to do medical image analysis, optical character recognition, you know, whatever it is you're doing, you need to get the image into memory first. You know, kind of think of it, what we're doing in this these series of guides is we're building our foundation. If you ever see some uh, construction workers, you're building a house or building a skyscraper, you notice that it takes the longest for them to put the foundation down to pour the concrete, to get the rebar in there, and it seems like it takes forever for that stage to get done. But once it's done, that building goes up super, super quickly. And the same can be said about learning computer vision and OpenCV. It takes time to pour that initial concrete, to get that initial knowledge in there, because it's a new skill. And just like that concrete needs to settle, it needs to harden, so does your knowledge. You need to give yourself a little bit of time and you got to be a little bit patient while we're learning the basics because once you have that foundation done, everything else is going to go up really, really quickly. And before you know it, you'll be tackling those face detection, those face recognition, those optical character recognition problems. You'll be ready. But first, let's learn the basics and let's start at the very, very beginning. How to load an image from disk. So if you check out my directory here, I have the source code and the example images downloaded to my system. We have two images really that we're gonna be working with here today. The first one is this image here. It's a photo of me and my buddy on my 30th birthday. My wife was amazing and uh, contacted a guy who has a Jurassic Park replica Jeep. If you're new to Pi Image Search, I love Jurassic Park. It's my favorite movie. So get used to seeing a lot of Jurassic Park references and pretty much everything we do here at Pi Image Search. I love to insert little Jurassic Park Easter eggs throughout the course. So enjoy. Anyway, so my wife was awesome enough to find this guy who had this Jurassic Park replica Jeep. We took it out on my 30th birthday, had a great time, super, super fun. So what we're going to do here is we're going to learn how to use OpenCV to load this image and display it to our screen. And then we're going to do the same for this image over here. We have this .py script here, load image OpenCV.py. This script, as the name suggests, is responsible for loading an input image and displaying it to our screen. And then to demonstrate how OpenCV can write images back out to disk and automatically convert file extensions, we're gonna write this image here to disk using this script. And take note, these two images here are .png images, but this image over here is a .jpeg, a different file format for an image. This script, the underlying OpenCV library, automatically handles that image conversion process for us. With that said, let's pop over here to PyCharm and take a look at our script. So we start with our imports here. We have arg parse for command line arguments and cv2, that's our open cv bindings. We then move on to parsing our uh, command line arguments. We have a single switch image, which is the path to our input image residing on disk. Now that's either going to be this PNG image here or this one, depending on how, on which image switch we apply. And of course you could pass in your own images as well. And in fact, I encourage you to do so because that's how you'll learn. You take what you learn in this course, you play with the code, you learn from it, and you extend it to your own images. So one of the first things you should do after running this script is apply it to your own images. Get that practice, develop that habit, you know, pour that concrete. That's what we're doing now. We're building the foundation. I do want to call out, though, that if you're new to argument parsing, I want you to read this tutorial here, Python arg parse and command line arguments. Command line arguments are just a fundamental skill that any computer scientist should understand. You're going to see them a lot, especially as you start working with like custom implementations, you start working with research publications. Take the time to understand command line arguments, even if you choose to execute the code in Jupyter Notebooks or equivalent. That's no excuse for not understanding command line arguments. So take, take the time if you're new to them. Just invest a little bit in that knowledge. It'll go a long, long way. So anyway, we're going to parse this command line argument and then we're gonna load our image from disk. 
The function we use to load an image from disk is the cv2.imread function. And the only argument you need to pass in is the path to the input image. And we're gonna supply the path here via our command line argument. And in fact, you can see an example usage up here. So the value for our image command line argument is 30th birthday.png. What it actually would be like if we hard coded it was this. So that's what would end up being insert there as the variable name for the image command line argument. Once the image is loaded from disk, it returns the image itself. Now, in OpenCV, images are represented as NumPy arrays. For single channel images, it's just a 2D matrix. And then for three channel images, which is what we typically work with, RGB images, those are three channel images. So what we can do here is examine the shape of the NumPy array. And that's gonna give us the height of the image, the width, and the number of channels. Now, let's say that we have a 600 by 400 image. What does that imply? It implies that this image is 600 pixels wide and 400 pixels tall. But if you look up here, notice how we're extracting the height first, then the width, and then the number of channels. So isn't that counterintuitive to what I just said, that the width is 600 and height equals 400? Doesn't, doesn't that contradict that? Well, let's think about that. Because this is a common question I encounter when I'm teaching the fundamentals of OpenCV and how images are represented. So I have this image pulled up here. Now, if we scroll our mouse across here, across the x-axis, what is that giving us? It's giving us the width. It's the width of the image. And if we go along the y-axis, that's the height. That makes intuitive sense. Now let's think of that in terms of how we may represent an image as a matrix. Well, if we go from left to right, the width is actually the number of columns in the image. And the height is the number of rows. And since we denote a matrix in terms of num rows by the num of columns, that's why we extract the height and the width. Because again, number of rows, that's your height, number of columns, that's your width. So hence, height, width, and the number of channels in the input image. So once we have the width and the height and number of channels, just to demonstrate that we've correctly parsed that information, we're gonna print it to our terminal. And then we're gonna display this new image to our screen, the image we just loaded. And to do that, we'll call the cv2.imshow function. We need two parameters here. This is the name of the window itself. This is gonna be the title of the window. And I'll show that to you in a second. And then that's the image that we just loaded right up here. And then we call cv2.waitkey. We're gonna pause execution of the script until we click on that active window opened by OpenCV and then press a key on our keyboard. And that'll advance the execution of the script. This, this wait key call is just a pause. It's a waiting for user input.